This will be a life-size model of a mid-sagittal layer of the brain, the nasal cavity, the oral, and the beginning of the respiratory, and a small part of the digestive system. Okay, to take a look at the brain, this entire section there is the right cerebrum, all that there I'm touching. The sulcus, or sulci, plural, those are those indentions constantly found on the cerebrum. The raised part is a gyrus or gyri. Those are multipolar neurons that are unprotected. Then the blood supply. The ones shown here are the many branches of the anterior cerebral artery that comes off the circle of Willis at the base of the brain. Now in a close-up. Mid-sagittal section here, this is the corpus callosum. That's a bridge between both hemispheres. Septum pellucidum there is a thin tissue that covers the right ventricle, a chamber hidden in beneath that tissue. The fornix, another bridge on the mid-sagittal. Anything here in white means it's cut on the mid-sagittal. And then looking here at the choroid plexus, vascular tissue that will produce CSF into the ventricles. The pineal gland there, that little white or little pink structure, that bulge is a gland. The rest of the pink is not. The third ventricle there is a space that the pointer is encircling. This will contain CSF, and of course it has walls there that I'll be getting to in the next. That dark brown there, number five, is the intermediate mass. It's part of the thalamus that connects the right thalamus shown to the left thalamus. And there's the right thalamus, that wall of tissue I'm circling that forms the wall of the third ventricle. And then from that little indention downward, that wall is the hypothalamus, very multifunction structure that makes a wall of the third ventricle. Then this groove here is the interventricular aqueduct, or aqueductus sylvius, as some call it, or mesencephalic duct, connecting fluid from the third to the fourth ventricle. That fourth ventricle is a small chamber right there. Then the cerebellum, this large item in brown with the white. The pons, that bulge right there, meaning bridge, connecting one part of the brain to the other. And the midbrain here, that area. And the medulla, or medulla oblongata, the last part of the brain, just before it becomes the spinal cord down below. The sphenoidal sinus, the airspace inside of the cranium. Here's a pituitary gland or hypophysis gland right there. Again, these are full size. And that indention there is part of the cella tersica called the hypophyseal fossa that houses the pituitary or hypophysis. This is the optic chiasm that connects the um, optic nerves where they crisscross at that point. The white here that I'm touching is the dura mater, one of the three tissues of the meninges. It goes down and around. As you continue following it right there, there's more of the dura mater. This is sagittal sinus. It's part of the veins of the brain, referred to as a sinus because it has no muscular walls. It's formed by the dura mater. Here's a spongy bone or the cancellous bone of the cranium. And that little spot there is the lambdoidal suture cut in mid-sagittal section. Starting here is the spinal cord at this point of the atlas going down from my pointer. Of superior to it was medulla, inferior to it there would be starting the spinal cord. That's the atlas vertebrae right there cut in cross section. And the axis or the second vertebrae of the cervical vertebrae is there. The blue would be the inner vertebral discs that separate each of the vertebrae. This is a ligament that tends to give strength to the musculature and cervical vertebrae, the ligamentum nuge. Sinuses, another sinus here, this is the frontal sinus in the frontal bone. 
All of this space here I'm circling is a nasal cavity that's going to have some detailed structures here. This bulge is the inferior nasal concha or inferior nasal turbinate. This will be the middle nasal concha or middle nasal turbinate. And the smallest of the three is the superior nasal concha or turbin na superior nasal turbinate. This hole here is an opening to the auditory tube that goes up into the middle ear. The hard palate or the rough hard roof of the mouth is part of the maxilla. And then there's a small bone there called the palatine bone, posterior there to the hard palate. It's also part of the hard palate. The soft palate here, a musculature with soft tissue on the posterior roof of the mouth. And then the uvula, a hanging structure you can see when you look into your open mouth in a mirror. To separate the pharynx, the yellow I've circled is the region above the pointer called the nasopharynx. And inferior to it, this pharynx part is called the aeropharynx, ending there at the blue structure called the epiglottis. Tonsils, this lymphoid tissue, this is the lingual tonsil because the base of the tongue or lingus. This one here is the palatine tonsil, which is at the edge of the soft palate found in the wall. Epiglottis would be that tissue there used by the respiratory system to block the glottis or airway going into the trachea.